Hello, hello. Now we're going to see two of the most important brushes. These two brushes are basically focused on clumping and parting. But even if they're one of the or the two of the most important ones, they are not normally used because we normally do not clump the guides unless it's a really a specific groom that has shapes that are like this. And then we need to heat this shape perfectly to actually get the effect or something like this, we will clump them. But normally the clump effect is driven in the hair and not on the guides. We can create guides that clump, but that's an actually an art directed uh, reason. So it's completely focused on the style that we need to do. And normally that's driven by the scope. So you scope parts and get parts. The, the clump brush is going to help to achieve that effect, but it's not the most common way to build it. Why? Because as you can see here, the scope brush works, works by clumping all the guides. The nice thing is that you have a press down control. So you press down, hold, and if you move left, you will clump. If you move back, you will unclump. So you can go back to your effect and control how much do you want to clump your guides. Another thing that is nice to know is that this is a screen based brush and will affect everything on the screen, screen structure. So this will not clump. If you hit clumping or you try to clump here, you can see that they are actually not clumping on a space like these two. So it's not an attraction brush, or at least it's not an attraction brush that works on X, Y, Z. It's a projection of an attraction brush. So if you want to attract from the surface, you hit on the surface. So that will attract on every point. But if you hit on the side, it will not attract every point. It will attract the point towards the camera projection. If we go for skull points and we remove the skull points, the effect is negligible. And you can see that the difference in the effect is minimal. You can see it there. Now, instead of the coarseness that we had before, the tips are more attracted and creates kind of a patterning that we may see as kind of a parting. So if we create this tree here, but we need a really even distribution for that. So something like this that has a nice elevation or a nice lift. So let's try to part here. And you can see that everything there gets parted. And let's try to part here and everything here gets parted. But the influence area is the actual clump and not the party. So that's good to know. Uh, if you want to clump some areas like this, just bear in mind that you will have to do it more than once. It's always good to remember that you can select by group. So you can just click here and select the areas that you want to keep, hit enter, and those are only going to be the ones, or those are the only ones that are going to be affected. And you can reiterate more than once and the effect is going to build across on your surface. So if you have something like this and you keep building up and building up and building up, you can see that the effect will build up on that projection. So it's good to always bear that in mind that the effect will keep building up. But if you do a good projection, you can have a nice looking clump. This one was way too big. So let's try to get something that is not destroyed. So if we have something like this and we clump here, so we'll output this shape. So you can see that there's a clump there. So it's not that as much of a simple uh, effect. You cannot bend them and you will have a more a structured effect there, but it's a still not a perfect effect as it's just a projection from camera and not an attraction on surface 
which will give you a better effect at the end. So it's something to bear in mind how this actual brush works and that focus more on the effect of the brush via the projection on the camera than the actual effect on the brush via the surface that it's affecting. So this will be the clump and in the next lesson we will see the parting.